Premiere Pro is a powerful tool that offers a lot when it comes to export settings, but sometimes the simple things can become overly complicated. So how do you know if you're getting the best export settings for your videos? I'm Tom and I'm with Envato Tuts Plus. I'm a commercial filmmaker with nearly a decade's worth of experience working across everything from camera and lighting to directing and producing content and of course, editing video. This right here is Push That Button, a helpful video series that asks the question, should you push that button? Now, I'll be using a heap of assets from Envato Elements in this video. If you like anything that you see, you can get them all right now. I'm talking about unlimited downloads of video templates, stock footage, music, sound effects, and heaps more. I'll talk more about that later in the video. Let's dive into the editing side of things right now and we'll peel back the curtain in Premiere Pro. We wanna look at a render setting that on the surface sounds pretty self-explanatory. However, it's much more technical than you might think. That setting is a little checkbox option that asks you if you want to use maximum render quality. Maximum render quality, what does it mean? Should you be using it? Well, of course you should, right? You've spent all of this time planning, shooting, cutting the perfect video. Why would you want to render it anything less than maximum quality? Well, the first clue arises when you hover your mouse over the setting in Premiere. Adobe does give you a little handy tooltip that goes some way to explain the setting. And you'll see that it explains the setting gives better quality scaling, but increases in code time. Now, that makes sense, I think, but speaking from experience, I've checked and unchecked that box with reckless abandon across my entire career. But no more, today I've taken the time to find out exactly what is happening when you push that button so that I can share it with you. I know you wanna know if you're using the best settings for Premiere and I wanna bring that to you. Now, Adobe does give us the beginnings of an explanation with that tooltip, and the key thing to look at is it gives better quality scaling. So if you're like me and countless other editors around the world and you like to shoot 4K and edit that on a full HD timeline so you can punch in and reframe, then this is the button for you. Now, checking the box is going to help clean up any horizontal, vertical, or diagonal lines in your image. They can sometimes get a little bit jagged when you scale up or scale down. Where the Adobe tooltip does leave us hanging though is that this setting is useful for more than just scaling. You're going to want to push that button if you're scaling, rotating or repositioning your footage. Basically if you've touched anything in the motion tab of your effects control panel then you'll want to hit that button. And this goes for anything that you've put on your timeline. Footage, motion graphics, images, text, anything. But there's some other sneaky things that might also be changing these parameters. So look out for effects like warp stabilizer which scales, rotates and reframes your footage in order to stabilize any shaky movement. Let's take a moment and look at a real world example. I'll paint a picture for you. Client, let's call them Product Co, hires you to create some branded content for their website. They want a two minute 16 by nine version of the video that will live on their about page. Pretty standard, but wait. They would also love a cut down version of this for their Instagram feed. They're thinking 30 seconds. Oh, and while you're at it, maybe a 15 second version for stories if that's not too much trouble. <laughs> so. This probably sounds familiar, but uh, in one conversation, you've gone from standard 16-9 deliverable to three to four different aspect ratios and multiple different lengths for this one video. Now, if it were me, I would focus on the de main deliverable first, and then I'd pull that cut down version from my hero video once it's been approved. That way, you're not gonna end up with any non-approved content in the shorter edits. That makes sense, right? So once you've got the approval for the longer piece, you can start the cutdowns for the 30 second Instagram feed video, which will either be in one by one or four by five aspect ratio and the nine by 16 vertical video for stories. You create your new sequences with the correct aspect ratios, you copy your content from the hero video and you make your edits down to the requested times. It's looking great. Now look, there are some auto framing functionalities in Premiere Pro these days, but let's for the sake of this video, pretend that that just doesn't exist. We're doing it the old school manual way. The last thing you need to do now is resize and reframe your content to fit the new aspect ratio. This of course means you'll be spending a lot of time in the motion tab of your effects controls panel, which you guessed it, is exactly what we're talking about in this video. And given that we learned that any content that has been scaled, rotated or repositioned greatly benefits from being rendered at maximum quality, then I think you'll find we now have our answer. The quick answer is a definitive yes, push that button. But there's also obviously a not so quick answer and this is where it gets pretty technical. It's not always necessary to know exactly what's happening behind the scenes of these programs, but in many cases, this one included, that knowledge helps to inform why you would use these various export settings. So allow me to get technical for just a moment. What's actually happening when you push that button uh, involves the interplay between hardware or GPU-based processing and software or CPU-based processing. This is all happening under the hood whilst you're using Premiere. Some effects and processes within the program are hardware accelerated, which means the GPU takes the grunt work, but uh, some aren't, and that means the CPU has to step in and take the load. 
Now Premiere was originally built way before GPUs even existed, so a lot of this has to do with the legacy of how the program was first written and then how it's continued to be built upon over time. If you're certain that you're not doing any scaling, rotating or reframing of your content within the timeline and that you're working at your native resolution of the footage that you've captured and you're only using GPU accelerated effects on your footage, which you can see with this little building block icon here, then there is absolutely no need to check the render at maximum quality box as it only kicks in when rendering via software or the CPU. All other rendering is done via hardware in the GPU, which by its very nature is much faster, much more efficient and designed specifically for that purpose. This is the case no matter if you're rendering on an Apple machine or exporting your content on a fully specced out custom PC. It doesn't matter if you've got a brand new 3070 or a 960. It doesn't matter if you're running a M1 Max chip or an Intel based Mac. Look, I think you get the picture. It all boils down to what effects you're using and what Premiere Pro determines is the best course of action when it comes to rendering those effects. So how do you know if you're rendering via software or hardware? Long answer, it's complicated. Short answer is you kind of don't. Checking the render at maximum quality box only kicks in if the program determines you are using an effect that requires software encoding. It does absolutely nothing if you uh, only need to render via the GPU. So my tip is just turn it on. Turn it on when you set up your sequence and when you hit export and you'll get the best of both worlds no matter what hardware you're rendering on. Hopefully that has cleared up a very small but pretty important setting in Premiere Pro. If you have any other obscure settings in Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, After Effects or any other content creation tools that you want me to cover, just drop it down in the comments. We'll take a look at it, we'll deep dive in and we'll present that back to you so that you don't have to do the research. In the meantime, I suggest you go and check out Envato Elements. With a subscription, you'll have unlimited access to a huge library of digital assets, literally millions of assets that you can download and use in your projects with super simple commercial licensing. All of the assets you saw in this video came directly from Elements. You can cancel at any time, so why not subscribe now? Check out Elements with the link in the description below. <laughs>